working on a restoration project where I'm going to replace the, uh, the light system that uh, displays all the lights in a pedestal across the top of the 1130. There's about 150 display lamps that go on and off to show the state of the machine. And the way IBM constructed it is it makes it exceedingly frustrating and difficult to change bulbs or do anything with it. And often these parts fail. So that panel um, is a honeycomb on the rear and there are these uh, individual nylon sockets that get force fit into each cell of the honeycomb. They hold a lamp, a bulb in it. The problem is that to insert those bulbs, you're dealing with a set of PCBs that have multiple lamps, 16 in, in the worst case, and there are six rows of them separated by only about 3 eighths of an inch. So you could imagine if you're trying to get in and force each of these which move and are not uh, you know, well positioned, each of them into the 16 holes to slide that, that uh, board in and then slide the next board in, it's very, very challenging and tedious to do. Um, and often these things fall out and you have this mess that you see here lying inside the, the, the container. I've seen at least three uh, 1130s that look like that inside. So my solution was to engineer my own PCB that is the size of the honeycomb. It has all of the electronics on the back, the SCRs and other things, and it mounts all of the bulbs in one place. You can easily pop a bulb out and replace it if it goes bad. Then this entire assembly just fits behind the honeycomb. I've got a couple of clamps that I've devised which will um, which will sit here and hold the PCB in the right spacing behind the honeycomb. So it's a, a system that makes it much easier to get to all of the bulbs and do the replacements. Now the uh, part that uh, has that attaches to the honeycomb is a, a lucite bar on each side and they often fail because of the adhesive. In fact sometimes the honeycombs themselves come apart. They're actually separate sections here. Uh, so I had to get a, a glue and, um, and replace this part, and I have to wait 24 hours for it to assume its full strength. Here I am bolting in some of the uh, mechanism from the rear. You can see some challenges that I face because this particular side, I can't get the screwdriver in behind it, so I'm going to have to remove that panel to get in from the front. The Lucite block is screwed into place through these brackets with those screws, which I can get to on one side, but not the other. Obviously no way to get this screwdriver in and behind this to get the two screws mounted. This is the emergency pull knob from the machine which was used to shut off power if somebody was being electrocuted or there was a fire. It caused an immediate drop of all voltages, not sequencing them down safely. We now have access to get the screws in. on firmly now. This emergency pull switch has unfortunately been pulled in my effort to get the switch out. And the way it latches in place, for those who are wondering, is this very simple mechanical detent that you pull that spring steel out and you push it in. It's now turned on again, allowing the machine to be powered. But if that gets pulled out, it drops all power immediately. Now we wrestle this in place with the proper screws and uh, the nuts on the back. We are 
in there firmly. Everything working correctly. We're ready to go. So I want to test this clamp on the side. The challenge is that the wires are blocking my access to get around the loose side. So I'm going to have to loosen these three screws to fit the piece in and then we'll come back and test out the fit. screw out so I can get access to pull it over. Okay, this is how it will lock in place with this thumb screw. So that's one of the two brackets and they will hold the PCB behind the honeycomb. So I'm about ready to put the panel with all of the lights into the honeycomb in position. Let's move it into place here. And get these bulbs up and in. Okay. And then the clamp around behind. There's the clamp around behind. that seems adequately secured it's in position I'm now ready to hook up the power do the lamp test and then get all the signals wired so the individual signals come in through these little pins uh, little clips that slide on the pins on the back of the PCB so the 1130 gives the power to the lights through these sets of three wires 7.25 volts AC is delivered in common across all of the lamps and SCRs. The SCR obviously rectifies just the one half wave of the AC to light up the bulb and then each is individually triggered by a pin on the back of the SCR except there is also a common line through isolation resistors to every one of the SCRs through the third wire this third wire brings lamp test to the system. So when we turn on lamp test, it'll trigger all of the approximately 150 lamps at the same time so we can verify that all the bulbs are working properly. So here are all of the connections plugged into the back. You can see IBM has laced them very neatly so you can tell exactly what wire goes on what pin. Okay, it's time to turn it on and see if the lamp test works properly. And we can see all of our bulbs are lighting and then only the bulbs that are involved in the particular logic signals. So I'm going to set it to location 961. So that's 961 and then I'm going to run that and we can see the lights flashing as it executes and I can stop it and then single step it one instruction at a time so that's the light improvement.